Roblox has just provided developers with an easy way of banning players and their alternate accounts from games. So today, we're going to take a look into how we can use this brand new ban system. Now, hopping directly into Roblox Studio, the first thing we need to know about the brand new ban system is that the only way we're able to ban players from our game is actually on the server side. So for the most part, that means that we are going to need to create a script inside of the server script service. Now, you might be assuming that Roblox added in a brand new service, which would theoretically be called the ban service, and that's what we would actually use to ban players from our game. But that's actually not the case. What Roblox did is they actually updated the player service and added a couple of methods to that service related to the ban system. So inside of our script, we're going to want to go ahead and create a variable for the player's service. Now that we have the player service, the first thing I want to do is create a function for banning players from our game. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a local function, which is going to be called ban player. And now this function is going to have a single parameter, which is going to be the user ID of the player we would like to ban. So we'll go ahead and say user ID, and we'll specify the type of this to be a number. Now, anytime we want to ban a player from our game, we actually need to create a dictionary that has a couple of key value pairs, which essentially is information that all relates to a player's ban, and we'll pass that information over to the ban method, which Roblox uses in order to ban the player. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable called config, and we'll specify the type of this using a colon to ban config type. And then we'll set that equal to a table. And now, like I said, this table allows us to specify some information about a player's ban. The first thing we want to specify about a player's ban is actually called user IDs. And the value of this actually needs to be an array of numbers, and each of those numbers would be players' users' IDs that you would like to ban. So this method actually allows us to ban multiple players at once if we want to. If we don't want to ban multiple players at once, we still would need to actually create a table here, but then we just simply pass through the single user ID, and we would still ban a single player. The next important information is how long we would like to ban the player for. So the key for this is called duration, and the duration is specified in seconds. So if I wrote 10 here, then that means that the player would be banned for 10 seconds. Whereas if I wrote 600 here, then the player would be banned for 10 minutes or 600 seconds. But now, what if I wanted to ban a player permanently? Well, we could pass through negative one as the duration, and that would make the player be banned forever, or at least until we actually unban them. Now, the next key that we can add to this table is called display reason, which is a string, and that string is displayed to players whenever they are banned from your game, or once they try to rejoin your game after they've been banned, this reason will also be displayed to them as well. So we can effectively use it to communicate to the player why they've been banned from our game. Now, the message that I'll display to players when we ban them from our game is you have violated the rules of our game. And then there's one more key value pair that I prefer to add to here, which is called private reason. And that is also a string. And it's pretty similar to the display reason. But the big difference between the display reason and the private reason is the private reason is not viewable by the player who has been banned. The private reason is only displayed to us because it is our game. So if we wanted to store sort of sensitive information here, I wouldn't store too sensitive of information here. But what I would probably store here is the specific reason as to why the player was banned. Let's say that you developed an anti-cheat system and your anti-cheat picked up on a very specific reason for why they banned that player. Now, maybe you don't want to let the player know on which cheat that you were actually able to pick up on, so you wouldn't want to put that inside of the display reason, but instead we can insert that inside of the private reason because we will only ever be able to see this. So an example of what a private reason might look like is they used aimbot on 5 slash 5 slash 2025, and I even included a ticket ID, which would sort of represent a system where players could report each other and create tickets this way. And like I said, the information that we're including here is some information which we might not want to display to the player, and we would only want ourselves or other staff members that we give permission to in our game to actually be able to see. And now that we finished creating the ban config, we can actually use this information and pass it to the ban method to actually ban the player from our game. Now, whenever we want to use the ban method of the player service, we actually need to wrap that inside of a p call because that method can actually fail. So we're going to go ahead and use a p call. First, of course, we need to create two variables. The first variable is going to be success, and the second variable is going to be called error, and then we'll set them equal to a p call, which we'll go ahead and create an anonymous function inside of. And inside of this anonymous function, what we're going to want to do is return the player service, and then we'll go ahead and use the ban async method. And now with this method, what we need to do is pass through the config, which we've just created in order to ban the player. So now we can use this function anytime we want to ban a player from our game. And if you're curious what it looks like when a player has been banned from your game, you can see that on screen right now. Now, returning back to Roblox Studio and our script, let's go ahead and write a function for unbanning a player. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create another local function, which is going to be called unban player. And once again, it's going to have a single parameter, which is called user ID, which would be a number. 
Now, very similar to the band player function, we once again have to create a config table, but this time instead of using the band config type, we would use the unband config type. So let's go ahead and create a variable called config. We'll specify the type of that to be unband config type, and we'll set that equal to a table. Now, this table is going to share some similar key value pairs as our band config. So for instance, we'll add in the user ID's key, and the value of that, of course, would be a table where we have to include the user IDs, which we would want to unban. And now that's actually all the key value pairs that we should have to include here. But at least while I was testing this previously, I did need to include a second key value pair here in order to actually use the unban method without it returning an error. And the second key value pair that I needed to add here was called apply to universe, which is a boolean. And this key value pair essentially determines if the player should be unbanned from all of the universes inside of your game. And by default, this is set to true. And like I said, you shouldn't need to include this key value pair inside of here. Roblox even says that on the documentation. But like I said, when I was testing it before, I was receiving an error anytime I tried to unban a player. So that's why I'm including it here just in case. And I'm going to specify that to true because I would like to unban the player from all the universes in our game. Anyways, now that we've created the config, let's go ahead and unban the player. In order to unban the player, we basically need to do the exact same thing that we did in the ban player function, but instead of using the ban async method, we would use the unban async method. So let's literally just go ahead and copy these lines right here, paste them down into here, and then instead of using ban async, like I said, we'll go ahead and use unban async, once again, passing through the config. So now, anytime I want to ban a player, all I have to do is call the ban function, and anytime I want to unban a player, all I have to do is call the unban player function. Of course, both times passing through the player's user ID, which you would like to ban or unban. Anyways, with all that being said, hope Hopefully you now have an understanding of how you can actually use Roblox's band system. If you'd like a little bit of a longer, more in-depth video on this, you can click the video that's at the top left of the screen right now, or feel free to go down below in the description and read Roblox's developer forum post on this brand new system. Anyways, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. And with that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.